Hello, everyone. As you know by now, Suchi is launching our product. And our goal is to eliminate student debt entirely for everyone in America. And we're going to achieve that goal. As part of our endeavor, however, we decided, you know what? We're going to change the life of one person in America. We decided to do a sweepstakes to engage all of our friends and family and constituencies. Uh, and guess what? We've had tens of thousands of people join. And guess what? Today we have a winner. Her name is Tessa. She's from New Mexico. Here's the deal. She does not know that she has won. And so what we're going to be doing on here is we're going to bring her on. She thinks she's uh, part of the top 10 and she's doing an interview with me. What she doesn't know is she's won. So hang on and let's see how this works. Stay tuned for 10. Hi, how are you? I'm David. Do you know who I am? I believe you're David. <laughs> yes, I'm David. I'm the CEO and founder of Suchi. What's that little light? I'm curious next to you. Oh, Is that like a little... It's my little salt lamp. It's my oh, little good vibes on my desk. Uh, what does that do? <laughs> um, it's said to produce positive ions that can counteract electricity, um, negative ions. Um, oh. like, because it's, it's Himalayan salt um, and it's pink, it reminds me of like rose quartz and positive I've... vibes. <laughs> I've heard about those things. And look, we need all the positive vibes we can get with all that's going on uh, in our world now. How are you affected with uh, COVID-19 and everything that's going on? I know we're shutting down over here, back again in Los Angeles. How is it affecting you? Um, I was actually uh, dislocated, but it was kind of serendipitous. A friend of mine ended up having back surgery in the middle of June, so I relocated to help them recover. Um, but I did lose my job because I was a full-time baker and pastry chef. Uh, so the restaurant industry was hit incredibly hard. Uh, I was in Santa Fe, which is a smaller city, and it has it also got shut down again recently because of uh, increase in cases. And I'm currently been able to return to full-time schooling. It's all online. But while I was in Santa Fe, I discovered the Institute of American Indian Arts and was able to continue my education there and will continue to do so. Uh, as of next week, I'll be finishing a certificate in museum studies. And wow. then next semester, thank you. Uh, next semester, I'm gonna continue with a certificate in Native American art history because my advisor is actually the director of the department. And as early as 2022, she's hoping to have a master's program so that both of my certificates will move forward and help cover those credits. Um, yeah, it's just really good timing. <laughs> It'll oh, only be the second master's program that the school even offers because it is a pretty small school. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations on going back to school. You know, sometimes it's very hard for people, you know, when you leave school and you go into the workforce to actually go back. And I guess the pandemic presented a, a good opportunity uh, for a lot of people. It was pretty good timing. You. <laughs> that's great. So what do you do with that when you graduate, that kind of major? What are you able to, to do? So my main goal is kind of twofold because being in an indigenous uh, institution that's really focused on Native American collections and curation and giving a voice to Native Americans having control over their own cultural artifacts. And um, so best case scenario would be in a museum helping to curate Native American objects. Um, but because of the pandemic, the museum industry was set back as far as public gatherings and uh, numbers of people. So my second uh, would be behind the scenes in conservation and collections care, um, which fingers crossed, actually just last week I had a really great interview with an internship opportunity that would involve hands-on conservation, um, but it would involve relocating to San Francisco, uh, which would be a really big step and um, finances was of course the major issue, but she's hoping to hear from me because it could turn into a full-time position. Um, so that's really exciting. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations again. So many good things happening in your life. I know. <laughs> now, tell me about, tell me about 
how you're paying for these, you know, so you're back in school and I know you graduated from, where did you go to school? Uh, I know My you undergraduate from... is from the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, where I graduated on the Dean's List. I was able to maintain over a 3.5 for my entire undergraduate. Wow. Um, and I took some time off. I got an internship with the National Park Service where I got to do historical um, research for the uh, museum at a national monument. And that got me going towards more of an art historical perspective and especially Native American works. And so I had to take some time off and take care of my grandparents actually. I helped both of them um, towards the end of their lives. So I like to think of it as part of my journey was helping them finish theirs because I owed so much of my creativity. My grandmother was an artist and she taught me how to paint at a very young age. And I think that's my foundation always going forward is how can I pay respect to the people who helped raise me. So I know that they're looking down on me and helping me through these challenges and going forward, I know that they would be so proud to see me in a museum. Mm. Um, so luckily enough, because I do have a bachelor's degree, returning to school at the Institute of American Indian Arts, uh, this semester I was awarded two separate scholarships, one based on the merit of having a previous degree and one based on a short essay I wrote about my aspirations. And so moving forward, that can continue. I actually still owe them a little bit in this semester because mm -hmm. unemployment isn't as lucrative as it should be, but I'm almost there, I'm making it work. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the cost? Like, how much do you have to pay and how much, how do you fund it? Um, ironically, this is probably the most affordable school I've ever attended. And that's probably because A, it's size and B, it doesn't actually accept federal funding because it's a Native American Institute. Um, so luckily I qualified for a lot of um, internal funding and scholarships. Um, but before scholarships, it's around $2,000 a semester, which in the scheme of colleges isn't that bad. But my undergraduate um, acquired a lot of loans. Uh, wow. A lot of tell loans. Me about those, tell me about those loans, because that's kind of what, that's yeah. what, as you know, what Suchi is. Suchi is job. Uh, we designed Suchi to eliminate student loans for awesome. all Americans. And the way we do that is through the power of friends and family. And okay. we decided that we wanted to give, you know, we wanted to change one person's life with the sweepstakes. And as you know, you're, you know, one of the leading contestants. So we want to know more about you. And so um, tell me about undergrad and how student loans affected you. Um, my initial undergraduate started at a private art school, which also did not accept federal aid. So I took what was called parent plus loans that are in my mother's name. And unfortunately, they are coming to fruition. And she was forced into early retirement because of the COVID pandemic. And we're just hoping that they don't start to garnish her pension. But it was talked about. And we're trying to figure out how we can get them transferred into my name as I am responsible for them. I believe that they were for my education. Um, but they're claiming that that time span was I only had six months to transfer it into my name, but because she has now been forced into retirement, I think we're going to have to revisit that. But uh, the stipulations of transferring them mean I would need to have a, a consistent employment. So wow. um, how much are those loans that you have that she took out for you? God, I hate to say it. Um, in her name, after the years of consolidation, it's almost 100,000. And that's not including what's in my name, which is almost 150. So you, that have was the remainder. so you yeah. have $250,000 in loans to graduate from college, just to go to college. And most of it had to do with living expenses, because like I said, I was a full-time student and I maintained an incredible GPA compared to a lot of my fellow students who had a hard time struggling with a full-time job. They almost never got to focus on their academics. So I'm proud of myself for that. Um, and I always, I still maintained part-time employment every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday I was in a bakery, but that really just paid for my car payment and, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the very little essentials that a part-time job can afford. So the loans really did pay for my, my housing and my schooling in, indefinitely. Oh. Um, I came from a single mom household who she never went to college. I'm actually the first member of my entire family in my mom's side to actually get a college degree. And I don't want to stop. <laughs> I want to keep going. <laughs> Tessa, you know, you are an inspiration uh, to many of us. I mean, you're an inspiration to me and I'm sure many of the people who are going to be watching this. 
because I would like to tell your story. Uh, we'd like to tell your story, uh, uh, you know, on social media. We'd like to, to um, um, showcase you as a person because you're you're a typical American who decided, you know what, I'm going to go get an education so I can work and I can be a, a, a constructive member of society. And here you are stuck with 150,000 in loans. Your mom, who's a single mom, who is trying to help you. She got 100,000 in loans, now you have 250,000 in loans. And because of the pandemic, she's forced out of early retirement with 100, she's forced into early retirement with $100,000 in loans that she can't pay back. And you have, I trying to transfer that 100,000 to you. So now you're going to have $250,000 in loans. Tessa, how do you plan to pay back those loans? I have faith in my education that working with institutions like museums and faithful endeavors like Native American repatriation cases, um, moving forward with conservation and collections management. Um, I just know that someday I will find where I'm supposed to be and all the skills I have collected will be useful. And um, something like this internship in San Francisco uh, would definitely be the next step in that direction, but um, some kind of external funding like yourself would be the angel to help it come to fruition. And we'll so. talk about that. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about that. But but um, so you get an internship. How much does an intern make? <sighs> Even in California, I think it's like twelve dollars an hour. <laughs> okay, so that's about twenty-four thousand a year. Well, that's not um, going to pay two hundred fifty thousand no. dollars because you have and to live. Technically okay, so a part-time internship to start. So she said I would absolutely need a secondary job. And despite the shutdown, I was able to apply to my dream job right before the shutdown. So fingers crossed, they call me back. It's also oh. in San Francisco. What's um, the, dream job? the the Walt Disney Family Museum is hiring a museum wow. associate. Uh, Just so you know, Disneyland, I'm a big kid. Disneyland is my favorite place in the entire world. Oh, I do. Disney I grew up oh. there. I'm actually from Orange serious? County. <laughs> I've been there about 19 yeah. times. Anytime my mom's, in my, apart from COVID-19, what's happening now, anytime a family member yeah. of mine visits from Nigeria, I'm Nigerian originally, or from New York or Dallas, <laughs> yeah. we go to Disneyland. I can't keep away from that place. So you like Disneyland. So you're applying to the museum in San Francisco. Yes. Um, it just happens to be a stone's throw away from this internship, which is at a place called the Art Conservation de Rigueur. It's a very small um, private art conservation, but they do a lot of independent work for like uh, ho local hotels and museums who need art conserved. Um, but I think working for the Walt Disney Family Museum as two part-time jobs in the museum field would just be the powerhouse of opportunity I've been waiting for. Um, uh, can would... I ask a very, I apologize for interrupt, can I ask a very, you know, you don't have to tell me specifically, but how much does a job like that pay? Um, because it's just an entry level, the museum actually starts more, a little bit more than the internship. The museum wants to start at $15 an hour, um, but that is closer to full time. So it would at least supplement most of the living costs that the internship would acquire. So if you, if you work full time, it's about 30000 a year. You have to live in San Francisco. It's kind of expensive down there. How do you pay off those student loans? Um, currently, because I'm still enrolled full time, they are deferred. So as long as I stay enrolled in a program, um, they they stay static. They're not acquiring any interest. Um, so everything is timing. <laughs> if the internship, which would allow me to continue going to school online full time, but would also involve a secondary full time job, uh, which I have done before, I can do it. I have. I have the enthusiasm. I have no doubt. So that by the time I'm done with the internship, which fingers crossed leads to a full-time position, which would lead to a salary wage. And then um, I could theoretically finish my master's within a year, which would probably be online again. And then I would start paying off my loans, um, which I think they garnish like somewhere between five and 10% of your salary. Wait, um, depending they, on they, the interest. They, they, they garnishing if, your wages now or you mean later no, on? No, once you, I okay, begin so. repayment, they base it on how much money you make. Yes. Um, so. And so if you're paying 5 to 10% of $30,000 of your disposable income, how long do you think it's going to take you to pay off $250,000? Um, 
yeah, forever. <laughs> I will probably well, have a roommate. <laughs> you you honestly think that you 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 went to college, you spent a long time attending college, and you're doing your masters and going through all these educational endeavors, and you might have to pay your loan for the rest of your life. Let's shift gears a little bit. Tell me about Tessa. Like, who are you? Do you have family? Do you have a lot of friends? Do you, do you plan to move back to, 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 to uh, Southern California if San Francisco doesn't work out? I'd love to know more about you. So my mom and my sister are back in Orange County living with my aunt, my great aunt. Um, I guess parts of my family have been in California on and off for the past like 50 years. We just move around a lot. Um, my sister who is technically older, she never actually finished her undergraduate degree. So she is still living at home and not sure what she's doing yet. So, um, she actually says she looks up to me a lot in that respect, my tenacity and, and I can tell um, why you're driven. <laughs> um, but growing up with a single mom who, you know, she didn't have a formal education, but as soon as we were born, she just jumped into the business world and she made a life out of nothing. Um, so that's always been an inspiration to me. Um, Tessa, um, you're the type of person who we set up Suchi for. Suchi's platform is intended to, you obviously love your family. You have a great relationship with your family, your grandmom, your, your, your grandparents, your mom, your sister who looks up to you. And uh, a big part of why we did this is to, to engage friends and family to actually gift. So for birthdays and holidays, instead of giving you toys and, and, and you having to give away, you know, uh, things which, you, you know, they don't necessarily appreciate socks. I can't imagine how many socks I've gotten, you know, before I went to college, I would have preferred to give me $25 instead into an investment account, like a, a very tax effective 529 plan. That money could grow for my college. And so a big part of what we did is create Suchi in order to help people engage friends and family to gift during special occasions like holidays and birthdays instead of wasteful toys and gifts. If you won the 40,000, how would it, what impact would that have on your life? I mean, it, it would change my life. It would give me the opportunity to pursue a relocated internship and potentially set me up for a future. Um, Cause right now I think I'm, if I, if I stay where I'm at, I don't know if there would be those types of opportunities and I would be fearful that I would have to go back to food service, which would be a waste of my education. <laughs> so wow. it, it might be my only chance. <laughs> Wow, that is so touching, you know, to learn that, that, that you, you feel that your life, you know, may be hamstrung because of student loans. Well, uh, Tessa, um, hold on a second. I have a phone call uh, from, hello? Emma, what happened? Oh, really? No way. I'm just on the phone. Okay, I'll call you back. Tessa, you just won. How? I'm happy to tell you, you won the $40,000. I have to confess, we tricked you. We knew you won before you came on today. We just wanted to learn about you. Really? Congratulations, Tessa. You're the winner of the $40,000 Suchi Educational Sweepstakes. I'll give you a moment to gather yourself. That's amazing. <laughs> give you a moment to gather yourself. It's okay. It's okay, take your time. It's okay. That's amazing. <laughs> how do you feel? Tell us how you feel. I don't know. It's a little unbelievable, but yeah. <laughs> well, you better believe it. Because you're going to be getting forty thousand dollars in a five twenty nine college plan from the state of Utah, but you can use the money to pay off any loan. Okay. You can use the money to pay off your current educational cost. You can use it for anything, in, including tuition. Not 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 to travel around the world, but anything to do with education. You can use it to to, to pay off your your the tuition. You could use it to to pay off to buy a computer. You could use it for on campus housing, uh, food, 
uh, and any number of things. You know, you've helped so many people and you've had people help you. You've helped your parents. You told me about that. And your mom really helped you. Uh, 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 and so, and your sister looks up to, so you have a family that's very united. And so you now have an opportunity to uh, help them, help your mom, you know, help make her proud. You know, she didn't make those sacrifices for nothing. You can help relieve her button. Uh, and now you have a chance to move forward in life and uh, knowing full well that good things happen, even when you don't expect them. So what are you going to do with the money now? Let's get to the final point. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Yeah, can finish uh, with the Institute of American Indian Arts, uh, absolutely, and moving forward um, in Native American collections care and curation, um, and hopefully get this internship in San Francisco and doing hands-on conservation. So it's a two-fold action, but I think it's all moving in the same direction. Tessa, thank you for being such an inspiration to, to me and to all of us. I look forward to hearing the rest of your story. I look forward to uh, uh, letting the world see you as a beautiful person uh, who, uh, in and out. And uh, you know, thank you for participating in the Switchy Sweepstakes. Congratulations on the winnings. And I uh, look forward to being in touch. Thank you. You're it was welcome. good to speaking with you. Same here. Thank you. Bye-bye, Tessa. Bye.